Hey everyone, Ray Sawville, RaySawville.com. In today's video, we are going to be going through responsive search ads and how you can use them in your day-to-day -day PPC accounts to ensure that you have the highest click-through rates and highest quality ads possible. An important note, as time of recording this video, beginning June 30th, 2022, Expanded text ads will no longer become available and responsive search ads will be the only ads available. That is not too big of a deal as most of the accounts that I am running today see higher click-through rates when running responsive search ads. So keep that in mind. We typically see higher click-through rates. The one thing that you typically tend to lose is more control over exactly what you say in your ads. But don't worry, I'll go through some tips on how you can get along and do that. Before jumping in, please consider subscribing if you like this type of content. Right now, only about 8 or 9% of the people that watch my videos are subscribed, so I'd really appreciate that a lot, so this content will continue to get recommended to awesome folks just like you. Let's dive in. Now, responsive search ads were introduced maybe two years ago or so, about 2019, 2020, and they were Google's way in automating and using their machine algorithm to showcase the best ad to the best person based on all of their thousands of real-time signals. As I mentioned earlier, this type of ad tends to get higher click-through rates. In my experience, it also tends to work better if you leverage some type of smart bidding. So if you use t some type of target cost per acquisition, target ROAS, or max conversion. So in my experiences, these type of ads work best when paired with some type of smart bidding. So obviously, in order to get over to the ads section, you're going to go into your ads account here. Go to the ads and extensions column and you'll notice ads. Um, I have a test account here open right now where I have like some apparel open up. So for purposes of this test, I've got men's boots, shoes, t-shirts, and women's boots. Um, so in order to create an ad, you just head to the ads section of Google ads and click this blue button and then go to responsive search ads. For purposes of this test, I'm going to create an ad for shoes. And then what you will notice within the account when creating ads is you're going to have this creator. It's going to give you an indication for ad strength, and then it's going to give you different ideas. So it's going to say, add more headlines, include the keyword in your headline, make sure that they're unique, and make sure your descriptions are unique. Now, I'm going to take things like quality score out of the picture here because I'm going to assume that you know the basics of quality score. If you don't, in the upper right-hand corner, there will be some notations around quality score and how to improve that. Uh, but for purposes of this video, just assume that you, I'm assuming that you know the basics of quality score. And it's always best practice to make sure that you have strong search term to add copy to landing page and tying all of, all of them together to ensure you have the highest quality score. So let's assume RaySawville.com sells some awesome shoes. Well, if I were to sell some shoes, I wanted to make sure that my ad copy is just ballin' and straight great. So what responsive search ads allow you to do is I can add 15 headlines and four descriptions, and you can expand upon those just by clicking the headline options here. You can also go to the view ideas section if you want Google to try and write suggestions for you. And half the time, they're not awful. Um, it can give you some ideas, but I wouldn't recommend going fully automated at, the, at this point. If that's something that you want to explore with just full automation, consider some performance max campaigns because performance max campaigns are pretty much just giving Google the entire keys and just saying, go nuts, Google, you can do it. So for purposes of this video, we're going to assume that we are selling just some awesome shoes. All right, so from a headline standpoint, you want to be short and sweet and get right to the point. So I like to break these down into several different factors. I like to go, what is the keyword? What is my promo? What is my shipping? What is my pricing? And then what type of unique selling features do I have? So going with this theme here for shoes, I have something as simple as buy shoes online, including shoes as much as possible within the headline is obviously going to increase quality score. Same thing with like bulk shoe supplier, um, unique selection. We can try something with the COVID route if we would want, where we could go something like stay, stay at home and shop online. I also have different things like extended return policy, um, and then obviously including things like unique selling features. If you are looking for ideas, like I mentioned earlier, you can go to view ideas, and they're going to break it down and show you different examples, and these are a good place to start. 
So you can say like, hey, here's my online availability. Shop this. Hey, here's my shipping and returns bucket. Let's write some headlines for that. The nice thing about having all of these different headlines is that it's going to allow the algorithm to go out and find what it thinks is going to convert best for you. And it's going to go out and test. But before we get into descriptions here, I want to talk about all the different permutations that can be made with all of these ads and kind of what best practices are before diving into the descriptions. Now, budget and click volume should be a limiting factor that you consider when running RSAs and the different amount of headlines that you want to include. I believe that if you include all 15 headlines and four descriptions, there are thousands of different ad types that can go out there. And in order to determine with any sort of significance as, as to what is winning, it may take you a very long time. So if your budget is on the lower end of things, I would recommend maybe doing like four to 10 headlines and two to four descriptions. However, if your budget is higher and you're getting thousands of clicks per day, you likely have a lot more room to expand from your headline offering and your description offering to say, hey, let's fill out and max out all 15 headlines and let's max out all four descriptions. And the reason for that is because the more clicks and the more signals that you're giving Google, Google will be able to go out and test a lot more, a lot faster compared to um, if you're only getting like 10 clicks a day, you may want to be a little bit more limited to the signals that you're giving Google. So it's not overwhelming and it takes months and months to learn. So just based on the amount of permutations that can be made between all of these ads, it just really depends on how aggressive you want to be with all these different ad types and all these different signals that are going into the mix. So with that in mind, with all the different permutations that can be made, um, Let's just assume for the purposes of this video that my, my client here gets thousands of clicks per day and I can choose to be pretty aggressive with the headlines here. That's great. So the other thing that I haven't talked about yet, which I'm sure you're really aware with is pinning headlines. I'm normally not a fan of pinning headlines unless I really want to ensure that a certain promo or brand message gets out there because I'm really drinking like the Google Kool-Aid to ensure that my click-through rate is the highest that it can be. So let's say that this 33% off all orders is just a monster promotion that I'm delivering all year round. In that case, I may want to pin this and say, show it only in position one, because I know this is a monster promo that is only limited time. So maybe I have something where it's like limited time, 33% off all, all orders. Um, that might be one instance where I might pin this because I don't always do promotions on my website. Otherwise, I'm not really going to be pinning headlines because Google is going to go out and learn and find what gets the highest click-through rates amongst all my ads. And then finally, when it comes to your descriptions, I like to uh, typically do three to four descriptions, again, going back to all the different permutations that go out there. Uh, but the basic formula I use here is I include my keyword somewhere in the beginning, and then at the end, I will use some type of call to action. So in the shoes ad group, I might have some basic brand information where I might say something like hundreds of shoe brands available, shop online today and save up to 33%. Um, I do have 90 characters to work with, but I can obviously do some that are more, some that are less. In my opinion, just getting different variants out there and testing them is typically the way to go versus spending hours and hours and hours on great ad copy from a search standpoint. Because a lot of the time, guys, like people, yes, are reading it, but in my experience, people are more so looking at the headlines and then like the major call to actions in the description. So from a description standpoint, I really tend to stay away from the pinning because I really do not like to pin he uh, descriptions. Headlines, like I mentioned before, they can be valuable. Descriptions, I like to stay away from them. So when really designing your RSAs, those are some really good practices to stay around and base that on for your ad copy by maxing out your headlines and descriptions if you get enough volume using those different themes and then pinning if it becomes available. Now, testing RSAs becomes difficult compared to expanded text ads. Back two to three years ago, you used to be able to take one ad versus ad two. Fine, here's the headline, here's the description that one clearly matched them by the champion versus the challenger and saying with 99% statistical significance, this ad won, let's go to the next permutation. RSAs, it doesn't become that clean. So one of the recommendations I, I mentioned is taking different themes in your ad copy and seeing if you can go that route. So having one theme all around pricing, if you can, one theme all around unique selling features, you can try to go that route. And then you can even have a different theme where it just has kind of everything mixed and intertwined all together. 
when it comes to the amount of RSAs that I like to include in one ad group, I don't like to do more than two. In some instances, one is good enough depending on volume, but two RSAs tends to be the place that I start. And then if I'm seeing similar click-through rates between RSAs, that's when I start to like it a little bit crazier with the headline descriptions that I tend to throw into the ad copy. And then the last tip quickly inside the interface here, depending on who your client is or who your business is, you may be able to take this RSA and then bulk update just like you would with any expanded text ad. So I could copy this shoe ad and then paste it to my boots, t-shirts, and women boots category, and then I can find and replace shoes with that category. Obviously, every single brand may not be able to do this, but you can quickly scale depending on what exactly you offer, or you can go with DKI dynamic keyword insertion or even ad customizers. There will be videos down the lines on those topics. Let me know if you would find that helpful and interesting, and I can make sure to expand upon that in a future video. And that's about it. Responsive search ads are going to become the norm, and they have pretty much been the norm for the past year or two. Um, lean into these types of ads because they're going to be around, and these are going to be what Google is pushing upon all of its users and advertisers. As I mentioned to kick off this video, I have seen higher click-through rates when using RSAs, especially when paired with some type of smart bidding signal. Let me know what I missed down below. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy to answer them. I also have a digital marketing Discord, which is down below in the description. Feel free to come hang out. There's a lot of like-minded digital marketers all throughout the world, so feel free to hang out with us. Until next time, appreciate you guys watching it. See ya.